so much. And thank you so much for, for the invitation. I really enjoyed all of you. And this has been a great conversation. Okay, so the not invariant that I would like to talk about today is crossing number. Uh, just for some context, this is the minimum number of crossings over all diagrams. So since we know that there are many diagrams given in the knot, this is one of the oldest invariants in the knot. And here is an example for the unknot in this picture, the crossing number is zero, right? because we can find another connection where there is no crossing. Um, but so this is the simplest example, but you can also imagine that it could be more complicated to determine the minimum crossing number to have a different projection. So there's still many things we don't understand about the crossing number, and here I will discuss two very old open problems. So the first one is: is the crossing number additive under the connect sum of knots? The second one is: is the crossing number of a satellite? Not bigger than this. This is problem 1.67 on curve Right. So uh, I will talk a little bit about the objects involved in these old projections, and then we'll talk about what we can say using the right. Okay. So uh, crossing number of connected sub. We form the connected sub of two knots by taking a chunk out of you can form this using diagrams and not using the chunk out of the diagram or not. Hmm. And then you make a new knot by connecting them together like so. Um, and it is really interesting that we cannot tell um, if the crossing number is added in under the connected sum. So it's pretty clear from just this example, just this picture, that the crossing number of the connected sum is less than or equal to the sum of the crossing numbers. But um, whether it is exactly that, we don't know. And this is a very difficult problem. So far, uh, the general, the only general results that we have is by Mark Lappin, which show to me it's a little bit easier to be um, this particular inequality of course. So we have. So can everybody see what I'm writing on the board? So he shows the general result that given any two knots, the crossing number of the connected sum is bounded between the sum of the crossing number of the knots divided by 150. Uh, and then of course it is less than or equal to the sum. So it's sandwiched. This is the best general results that we have so far. Um, but it's not effective because it doesn't tell you this general bound is not good enough in most well, has it does not tell us whether it is exact it is exactly right. Can you say something about on how we can use it? Or yeah, like where 152 is. Ah, okay. So so great. Thank you for the question. So um, the question was where where did he get 152? So the way that Latin can prove this is that he looked at He looked at the complement of the connected sum of knots and he put a handle body structure on the complement. So, uh, handle body structure is kind of like if you're familiar with normal surface theory, a uh, way to describe the complement of knots in different handles. Um, in, this, in this handle body structure, you can think of the disjoint 
you can reconstruct the story some of the not by looking at each of the analyze or uh, puncture two punctures here that contains each of the tables, right? And it closes up. So if I if I cut the complement along these surfaces and I join up the ends, so you actually get this joint sub of the two knots. And then you can project those and then that would possible. Right. So, so you see the this joint sum of the knots living inside. Okay. The then you can relate that to the actual diagram of the connected sum by counting how much the projection of these disjoint sum um, intersect the arcs of the connected sum. Okay. So the way that I've drawn here, it just seems like there's not a lot of like intersection. But in general, if you have a connected sum of knots, there can be all sorts of intersections. So, so then that, that's that's where that comes from. 152 is only particular to the tight handle structure that the handle body structure that you put on um, the knot. So you, you could improve this now by just choosing a different handle body structure, and that will make your estimate in terms of this intersection that you need. So uh, he, he says so himself that 152 was not a there, there's nothing special about the number, it just has to do with the, his choice of the um, Okay. So this is one of our general results. Um, and we know that if you have two alternating knots and connect some of them, uh, this is one of the early applications of the Jones polynomial, then the process number is bad. Okay. So uh, and then there are also recent results on torus numbers. Can you repeat that? Okay. Sorry. So yes. alternating and torus would have exact quality? Or? You have exact quality. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So the next question uh, is about satellite knots. And this here, we have uh, an example of satellite knots. This is uh, what, what's actually also called white double, where you tie up, an unknot is embedded inside of a torus, and you tie up the torus in the form of another knot, and in this case, it's a figure eight knot. So in general, the satellite construction embeds some kind of knot inside of the torus that is called a pattern of the satellite and you tie up the torus by embedding it into another knot. And that's called um, so another really simple question that you can ask is is the crossing number of the satellite knot bigger than its companion? Right. So if we look at this particular example where I tie up the unknot that's inside of the torus in the form of figure eight knot, the question is is this diagram that we get the one okay not, not even that like is the result does the result not have Crossing number bigger than the number of crossings in a figure eight. Is it bigger than four? Right. So, so that's we don't even know if it's bigger than four. We don't know if it's bigger than four. Yeah, isn't it? So which one is satellite? Which okay. one is complete? Um, so there's pattern and companion. Yeah. The satellite knot is the result, is the tight up one on the right. The pattern is whatever is inside of it, is the pattern that's that's being tied up inside of the torus. The companion is the figure eight. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So we don't even know if the number of crossings in the satellite is bigger than the companion, right? It seems pretty obvious that it should be bigger, but you know, there, there's actually no way to, to know that. Right. Uh, and, and of course, uh, there's a there's a general result uh, in in the form of like this result for crossing of by that. On lower bounds, but bound is like 10 to the 13, um, <laughs> which is again not very sort of computationally easy, but somehow uh, for, for satellite construction, 10 to the 13 is a pretty big thing in terms of spectrum. Okay, so um, today uh, we're going to focus on white head doubles. And like I said before, this is like when you tie up an unknot, if the class is shown as such, then this is called a positive white head double. Um, for the negative white head double, we have the opposite class. And you, the satellite knot that you get by tying up this sun knot is called a positive white head double. Um, so this question appeared on the low dimensional topology blog by Ryan Ludwig at some point. And he was saying, like, if we tie up an unknot in the pattern of the <clears throat> In, in I'm mixing my if I tie up the un knot with a companion, the figure eight knot in the satellite knot, 
is this diagram the one that realizes this cross number? In other words, in other words, is the cross number equal to eight? Okay. So the general form of the formula that we would like to get is that the <coughs> of w y hat double is equal to four times the diagram of the original knot of the companion plus two. Um, where does that come from? You're, you're just counting. You're just counting the number of crosses that you get, where you kind of have this two cable part where you multiply by four at every single crossing in the original um, diagram of the companion, and then you add two. So that's where the right. So uh, the question that we're going to provide an intimate family of um, is that we can actually determine that that diagram for the white head double is a minimum possible diagram uh, for a infinite knot. So hmm, for a knot with crossing number CK, um, and we're assuming that we have a minimum possible diagram. Let uh, we will consider it's positive and negative on the y and w. Suppose that k is a non trivial adequate one with phi equal to zero, then it's y and w is not adequate, and we have that the cross number is exactly realized by the k uh, factor for y and w. So I should say a few words about the, the terms that are involved here because you might not be familiar with some of the um, these constructions. So, uh, first of all, first of all, what is an adequate knot? Um, I will give you a definition in just a bit, but it, you can think of it as a generalization of ultimate. And then another thing is that we are assuming that the right, meaning the right of the adequate diagram of the knot, has right to zero. So this is not so right is not in general a knot here, but it can be strict to the class of adequate diagram. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that. How do you get lots of knots that have this property? Well, anti-parallels have this property. Um, for one, for example, is an anti-parallel knot. Okay. Okay. So, um, so examples, things like I. So knots. So we're looking for adequate knots. With zero. Also, another way to uh, break such a knot is by taking the connect sum of an adequate knot with zero. Right. So, lots and lots of these examples. So, yes. uh, what does W plus W minus? Ah, so uh, W plus is the positive white double in this system. When you, when the pattern has a positive class. What is positive? Positive just means like the, the sign of the uh, crossing and things like that. Oh. Okay. And then the negative class is the mirror. Like so, they should have all. The way it's the same, right? No, 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 no. yeah, you have to do them separate, yeah, exactly. Positive and negative, why the numbers don't have the same? But if you obtain one, mm -hmm. one from another by the vector universe, you can do the inverse, that's right. Then everything should be no, but then you, can, you take the inverse, you take the mirror image of all of them, yeah. okay? So they don't necessarily they don't necessarily have the same invariance, but you can get to their those polynomial by, by taking the mirror image, you're right, yeah. So all we need is the class by right? just the class right. with the opposite. Right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, I think I okay. explain all of this except for adequate class. Okay. And then and on the subject of crossing number of connected sums, we can also show that if you take the connected sum of such the white head double of an adequate class. This property with another adequate knot, then the connected sum is not adequate and the cross number is yeah. So we also get another tab. Right. 
Um, so, so this is one of the applications of. Uh, um, so I will say now, uh, I will go into how we do this, and it's an application of color um, So application of the title of the workshop, <laughs> and then rain will appear somewhere. All right. So, <laughs> and, and, and so you might have a question right now: How much? Uh, how how much can we generalize the result? Very much not. This is a very particular case, as we will see. Uh, it really, I really don't see how to generalize other phenomena. Uh, but we were just very happy to get this awesome number exactly. Uh, so, uh, so if, if there are any ideas for how to generalize this, that'd be great. But it's like a very particular application. Okay. So the Jones model. Uh, to talk about the color Jones problem, I have to start with the Jones model. Uh, here I'm giving a sort of combinatorial definition that is refined from the original representation, theoretic definition of the Jones model. So um, again, the Jones polynomial is not, I multiply by what's called the Cochran graph diagram uh, by this monomial that is negative a raised to the negative three times the right of a given oriented diagram of the link. And the Cochran graph is reduces a given link diagram into a bunch of discrete surfaces through the use of the common graph of speed. So I'll go here. And from there, and you can reduce any link diagram down to one of the circles and you can just add up all of the lower up elements together. So I'm showing here an example of Hoffman. Uh, and you can so you can go ahead and, and resolve and get rid of all the constants so you just get a bunch of circles and then a circle corresponds to negative a squared minus a to the minus two, and so you can add all of those together to get the wrong polynomial of a, and then you can substitute t to the negative one over four into it for a, then you recover the those polynomials. Huh. So if you're if, if you have not seen this, this is you can this is something that that uh, you can you know you can introduce to a to a student without much, much background that they can go ahead and compute the Jones polynomial or Hopf or Treble. Um, but I wouldn't recommend going more processing than that because how many states do you have to evaluate if you have um, 10 processes? You have to do two to the 10, right? Uh, and, and that's why, so, so, and that's why Moshe was talking about how, you know, it's, it's kind of amazing if you can uh, look at knots with more than 23 processes. And uh, there's some context to the, the result that he was citing from Matthew Sephora, and they were dealing with another big open problem on the Jones polynomial since this discovery, which is that the Jones polynomial is textic unknown. Okay, so that is also not known. Uh, the reason they could only go up to 23 crossing is because, like I said, you have to, you have to, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you want to compute the Jones polynomial, you have to deal with the fact that it's textic simplicity on the number of crossing. So uh, up to 23, that's amazing for, um, I, I think that's what they did in that paper. They verified that conjecture um, that the Jones polynomial text is unknot or not or links up to 23 constants. Well, actually it's, it's already known not to the knots. Right. So a question, yes. Uh, so for this game relation, mm -hmm. do you not, do you not require an orientation? Like, is, is that really? No, a you don't need an orientation. The orientation is taken out and put in the right. There, there is an oriented state division. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a separate state division. But for the common bracket, you can the the orientation is kept track of. So, I mean, right? if I just took a constant of x and g, would the person be able to like swap the a and a inverse? Or no, no, not actually. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, this is consistent. Yeah. Oh. If you rotate it, it will still give you the same. Yeah. Weird. Same yeah. People. yeah. People. You can try that. With me. Yeah. <laughs> There's some coloring yeah. exercises that we can do. It's, it's fun. Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, um, that's an example of the Jones Paul module. Uh, and it came from, so when it was discovered, it came from the representation theory of quantum. Okay. So, I'm just going to briefly talk about this so to give you some context. And here's a great map. So you can. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, did, I got two words there. Okay. Um, great. Well, if you're not, that's also great. All right. So uh, you can, given any non diagram 
find a close grade representative of it uh, in this form. And from this perspective, you can decompose this knot as kind of an operator between the ground feet. So you can think of this as a map going over the ground field K, so lowercase k, uh, by decomposing it into smaller maps when you get the next up. So you have, so so here's the map, here's the the, 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 the functor that maps it to the module uh, only. So the crossing goes into this map between B tensor B to B tensor B. That's called the R matrix. So what, let me back up a little bit. What is B? Um, B is the irreducible representation of the ribbon hop algebra UQSLT. So I'm not gonna go, you're welcome to, to I'm happy to talk about this, the, the quantum group stuff after the talk. I'm not going to go into it here. Let's just, there, there's a miracle, these things exist, mm -hmm. right? There's a, there's a ribbon top algebra. Um, you have a, you can talk about your representations, right? And what you're thinking about is that if you have a crossing, that can be viewed as a map from the representation, the reducible representations, the tensor product of them to another And then you have the module homomorphism of R. It's called the R matrix. And then if you have the crossing on the opposite side, this gives you the opposite, the, the inverse module homomorphism. And the important thing is that when the algebra that you're using to do this coloring is a ribbon top algebra, then R itself satisfies the yang vector equation, uh, which is kind of like writer next to me, but like way fancier thing for the writer next to which means that when you look at an image of this map from the ground field from K to K, and you take the trace of that, you get a weighting error. So, so that is an idea. Um, and something else that I wanted to show was, was this map. So, So that's the equation. Um, and once you have this, once you have that uh, corresponding map, corresponding module to focus on the R matrix, connect them all together, uh, satisfy them so you can get a knot. So after this discovery, uh, and because this construction works for a lot of algebra, uh, we basically have too many. We, but, uh, Okay, so for the color build problem, the only difference for each n, we take the n irreducible representation. So that's um, if, so I should also say that this representation varies with the assumption that Q is not a root. Okay, so when Q is not a root of unity, um, the representation theory of the quantum group is very nice. Uh, for each n, there's only one. There's only one in this world. So then just replace all of them, just, just replace everything with each n and take this trace with each n. Um, and then you get an n color. Yes, I'm not sure where that is. B is, is near this representation of the algebra. What is B and N? Uh, is the B, so when B is one, there's a two dimensional representation. Right? And then when B is two, then you have, uh, you have the N plus one. 
Right. Oh, so there's, there's more reduce. There's more to reduce for replicas. Oh, it's what you're saying for yeah. this other. Yeah, we're taking this other. Oh, uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. So um, in terms of like the, the graphical skin theoretic process that we were talking about in the top of the record, um, do the end color Jones polynomial is the same as replacing your diagram, original diagram by a flat or a So we don't, we don't need to worry about exactly what these coefficients are, but we can think about it for practical computing purposes as a sum of um, the parallel backwards. So let me just do a quick example of that. So you can see. So we have the top thing. And to compute the three color Jones polynomial, we would take the two blackboard tables of this diagram, which means that this total parallel to this. And apply the Kaufman bracket to this guy and sum them together with some around all the um, So, again, this is a, an absolute monstrous thing to evaluate because now uh, the number of constants is not just controlled, but uh, it's also growing with n, so n squared, but gradually. So, um, if so, this is this is d2. In general, the, the number of constants grows. With any right. So, okay, so what is an additive? From one crossing, you can take two resolutions, which means you just replace the crossing by R, you get rid of the crossing, that's like what we were doing with the common graphics game. And you take two of the R's, and you keep track of how you resolve the crossing by this, I guess it's the pink segment that I do. Um, when you do that at every crossing of the non diagram, you connect up all, all the results of R to get a bunch of close circles. What is, yes. is it the. This is just like how you did the resolution. So it just tells you, like, you did it. This is just a thing that keeps track of how you, how you went from like this crossing to the, the R's. So it's not a part of the. Uh, it's not a part of the. Yeah. It's something that you add in order to keep track of that information. Yeah. Right, but you added the, like the, you change the space of it by adding this. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's not the link. It's not the link anymore. It's like a graph that we can obtain by adding this. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good thing. Okay, so um, we say that the link is a adequate if it emits a diagram that is a adequate, meaning. That if I take the A resolution and all the crossings and look at the resulting thing, like the circles plus the pink segments, okay, every single segment has ends on two distinct circles. That's that's the definition of the thing. So it has such a diagram. Like that. Um, similarly, if it is B adequate, if it's a missed diagram where it's choose the B resolution at every single crossing, each pink segment lies on distinct um, six circles. Yes. Can you say again, it's not if that diagram, but it, there is some. There diagram. is one diagram. That's right. yeah. uh, so, so a link is adequate if it's both A adequate and B adequate. For our purposes, we're going to require that the same diagram uh, is both A adequate and B adequate. There, there's, there's a slight, there's a subtle, there's a subtle here. You can also say like, that's one A adequate, another B adequate. That's like part of the step. So. Because it's, it's hard to it's hard to prove. Uh, I guess it's about the thing with this is like if it doesn't necessarily have five. You know, if like if it has minimal crossing, if this is the minimal crossing that I can like that. Okay, so here are two examples. Um, on the left hand side, we have figure eight now. Now adequate. In fact, this diagram uh, is an adequate diagram. Uh, and more generally, if you have an alternating link, you can definitely this is going to be adequate. Reduce alternating variables. <laughs> um, and then on the right hand side, this is actually not active. So when you say something, a link is not active, it means that none of its diagrams are active. Okay. 
which is also a difficult thing to show. And what you try to do is you use other invariants like the coefficient of the Jones column to tell you that there's no way that this thing can hit a adequate factor. Right. So examples, let's so the first part is the A resolution. Um, this is all the A resolution of both of the diagrams. So you see, I replaced all of the crossings are gone and they're replaced by the matrix segment. Um, the circles that I was talking about that result from this are the black circles. Right? And can we can we all check that for each of the segments, the same segment, the two ends by a matrix same circle? Right. Okay. So this this is actually a yeah. the this diagram um, for this other non on the right hand side is also a big right? If I look at each of the segments, it actually happens to have every every segment. That's two ends of this same black surface. What was I? Yeah. Yes. So is this kind of saying that there's not sort of like, uh, like maximizes the number of circles or something? That's great. Right. Yeah. Okay. Maximizes the number of circles. So you're right on. So this is that doesn't just maximize the number of circles, but also the the coefficient, the, the power of the monomial that will affect the Okay, so if you put these two together, it's actually not which is what this is being used for in our case. All right, so um, this is a B adequate part of it, right? And then you have, so you have this, and then you have um, the, the right hand side, this is a not B adequate diagram, right? Because you can see the radius. The circle that has the segment with two ends on the same circle. Okay. Um, but so on the left hand side, we already have a diagram for the figure eight on the alternating diagram that is adequate. On the right hand side, I can't I can't actually claim that this not is not adequate just because one diagram is not adequate, right? But you can know some other you can know this by some other variable coefficient just that's the I'm claiming this, but, uh, but really, I just wanted to show you like what it means for for diagram to not have a we have this second that two of them okay. All right. So um, it is well known, and this is a fact that you can find in licorice, um, that if you have a diagram of a link K, then the degree uh, of the color Jones polynomial, meaning the highest power in T of the Jones polynomial, is bounded. By the number of crossings. <laughs> so if it's the degree, then it's bounded by the number of positive crossings of the diagram. And then if, if we're looking at the lowest power in T, the polynomial is bounded below by negative number of negative crossings of the diagram. So you, you can do this. Uh, so so what this tells you is that the diagram gives you its bounds on the crossings. Numbers or not. So, and these inequalities, you know, equalities in the case at what we're seeing here. And so, again, so, so, so Nancy already, already like pointed to what happens. This is again the evaluation of the coffee, which it, it, it is adequate. Right? And then what happens is that you can pick out the largest, huh, the monomial with an A with the largest power. Because it is a diagram. Right? So uh, that's that's going to be this guy over here, the a squared minus a squared, right? And where does that come from? If you go from any other state other than the all a state to any other state, you decrease the number of circles, right? And then on the other hand, if you choose the all a state, the power of your model is going to be larger. Right? Similarly, uh, this is this is the B adequate diagram. So you can also see that the smallest powers is, is realized by this B adequate for the same reason. So that's basically, I mean, this example basically shows you why why this is the safest. You can do it for any adequate. Yes. I'm not sure if this is true for the but maybe it's really odd. These polynomials are only finite. 
Oh, this is definitely true for Alexander polynomial, but, but not true for the Jones polynomial. Oh, the Jones polynomial. The Jones polynomial is, yeah. So, so if you fix the right hand, it is fixed. There's no, it's not defined up to the unit. Ah, okay. Yeah. So when we say degree, we know. When, when, yeah, when we say degree, it actually has a Yeah, no, no, that's a great question. So, uh, certainly true. So, the question is, is, is the Jones polynomial defined up to the unit? Um, so, certainly the Alexander polynomial is defined up to the unit, but, but not the Jones polynomial. So, if you fix the, if you fix the right, so um, you, if you fix the right, uh, and then you add that to the common bracket and fix it. But if it's just the common bracket itself, uh, it's, it's, not, it's also not invariant, right? Um, and so our, the thing that's new about our result is that we actually show that for the color Jones polynomial, uh, you get a similar value on the degree of the color Jones polynomial. And the, this degree drop is actually common bracket. Meaning that so so the upper bound, what you do is just you multiply the original upper bound by n squared, right? And there's like the rest of the term that's like go in. Um, when we go to the color domes, we actually show that the distance between this upper bound and the actual degree of the domes model is actually like completely projected. So if if your diagram is not linear, so remember that that a a a not is not adequate if none of its diagrams are are adequate. <laughs> this means that you always have some distance, and this distance is quadratic between the actual degree of the polynomial uh, of the color Jones polynomial and the other one. Oh, sorry. Uh, so this is really this is really it. And I, I just want to say one more thing. And this really isn't something. So this quadratic behavior with respect to n squared is not something you can see just from the Jones polynomial because everything is sort of put together. Uh, and so this tells you that the Jones polynomial is strictly more information. Is that what you're using? Right. So let me see how much time I have to give to you. Okay. Oh. All right. So, um, and that that's really that's really the. the <coughs> That's really what we did. Um, the first thing, so, so we talked about the Jones model, the color Jones model, a little bit. Um, how does it relate to the white hand dot? So we have the formula for the degree of the white hat double of an additive color dot, and this is from the work by Ken Baker, um, Shihei Takata, and Kimi Hiko Motegi, when they were studying the slope conjecture for South. Uh, so they were able to find the degree of the degrees, so both the degree in highest power and lowest power of the color Jones polynomial of the white hat double being adequate. So, so there's a very explicit formula for that. And from there, you can, for the example of that, for the families that we were looking at, specifically those um, adequate knots with right zero, zero right adequate knots, you can see that two times the degree span of the color Jones polynomial. Is equal to four times the number of crossings plus one times n squared plus another term. Uh, that's that's linear uh, with respect to n complexity. Okay. So what what is this four C D plus two? Right. So remember our goal is to show that the number of crossing is exactly four C D plus two. Okay. And now the color Jones polynomial is four C D plus one. <laughs> Okay, so we're very close, right? And um, using the previous theorem that I just talked about, if we can show that the white hat double of the knot is not adequate, then we have this strict inequality for the degree span of the color Jones polynomial that it is strictly bigger than four CD plus one. So since the upper bound is four CD plus two, this forces the actual crossing number to be equal to four CD. So that's the strategy. Um, and as far as I know, only works for this very specific type of knot where we do this computation. So you found like you find you, you find the cellular knot that with, with exactly um, the degree span equal to equal in quadratic terms to four C D plus one. Okay, you force it, showing that it is not accurate. Okay. Um, and the, the trick here is is the difficult part actually. Was, was to show that um, so for the previous thing we have strict inequality 
with the assumption that the white cell is not active. It actually turned out to be kind of difficult to show that the white head, to show that cell is not active. So it's not in any active diet. So we try looking at the coefficients, we try looking at some other things. Um, we, we ended up making some assumptions about what the structure of the degree of the color gel, gel tongue needs to look like in order for it to be active in the color prediction. Um, this is it. So, so if there's anything to be improved here, being able to show that something's not adequate was, was something that, that is very interesting. Um, you know, K itself is, is, is adequate, but it's not easy to tell whether whether Y is active or not. And that, that was the thing that we did. Um, we did a lot of work on maybe could could be better, could be done better. Okay. So So um, just wanted to say a little more about this formula from, from Ken um, and his collaborators on the degree of the white head double of the knot. Um, so this sort of comes from this seminal result on the color drill column by uh, Savaros Garibaldis and, uh, and Tom Lee. That the degree of the color drill tongue of this quadratic quasi polynomial n. So what this means is so so your n is like the color or the the dimension of the irreducible representation, and you can write the degree as a function of n. So this is like a quadratic polynomial n, right? Except that these coefficients of the quadratic polynomial. Um, are not fixed. They're they're not necessarily like a fixed number. Um, they they vary periodically. With the end. Right. So this is true of all all knots and and loops. Okay. So um, and then these are periodic functions. Of the end. I just said that, but the only thing I want to say is that those are rational. Um. So. The condition that was needed in order to apply Ken um, and his collaborators' formula for the white head double is that um, is that the period of these coefficients be less than or equal to. So some examples that you can think of are adequate knots. Adequate knots have period one. So for an adequate knot, this polynomial is actually a, a true quadratic polynomial rather than, than just a quasi. Um, and then towards those, this is the other example we could get. Um, it would also be great to get a general formula for the degree of polynomials polynomial for any satellite operation that's that is not the case. You need some assumptions on you need some assumptions on, on non negative and white. Yes. Yeah. 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 So n is the number of colors that yes, that's right. And so the degree of the polynomial, so it sort of doesn't depend on the knot. It is, or it does because the degree of the n color goes. Yeah. But it's so over any knot I give you, and mm -hmm. n color goes one of them. Yeah. The degree is always going to be of this. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So um, they did that by if you know if, if you actually evaluate the drill column, you get a bunch of two series that are added together, and they actually showed that the um, the color drill polynomial has a sum over these two series and two homotopy, which means that um, its degree, its resulting degree, is going to be a quadratic polynomial. Is there something like a homoscoping series that happens at bunch of Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like the Number theory part of this. So they just they just decide I'm gonna look at this. I have a bunch of students. I'm gonna look at this from a number theoretic point of view and these are that's that's yeah, quite an amazing result for any knot. And recently it was also shown in collaboration with Aaron Lala that that the Humphrey knot equals Q So that that's crazy, right? Okay, so yeah, so you can you can study the colloquial formula from all of these functions. Um so, so my point is that you know, can can Ken's result depends on uh, depends on this this thing, this degree 
we're going to classic polynomial that we well behave uh, before you take the white. So it will be nice to get a general. Uh, but kind of another limitation to this. Uh, and then I will so let me see if I have five minutes to sort of give the. Uh, oh, yeah, I do. Great. All right. Can I ask another question? Yes, please. So, so if I plug in n equals one, yeah, we just get back the Jones one. The degree of the Jones one. That's it. So then, how do I interpret this thing on the, the right when you plug in n equals one? It it doesn't make sense unless it doesn't make sense unless you go to n, right? And I can write down the the formula for this. It, it's just like the number of positive constants. You see? Okay. So so let's let's go back to because I no, it is a good thing for this because I wanted to go back to this. Um, I wanted to go back to this. So you can this. Where does this down come from? This down comes from just taking the a, taking the all a resolution uh, on on the non diagonal um, And if you have n greater than one, then you just the, the formula is written down in, in the form of the, of this upper bound is written in the form of the for that one on the Okay, so you have CB, C plus B uh, over two and squared plus over okay. When you plug in N is equal to one, this term just becomes the number of positive classes divided. Okay. Uh, and, and then, so, so let me let me read right now. This is a really good question. So like And this is with the assumption that k is additive. So you have c plus b over 2 plus 2 b a d n. Hmm. And I think that's it in the unconfused case. b a d n is the number of circles that you get when you take all the way to the And then I'm missing a n squared here. So this is the formula for it for all n. Um, and so, but but the you're right that the coefficients don't really make sense unless you have a color circuit, because so you can isolate out the If n is equal to one, then you're just adding. Then you're just adding a c plus c over two plus uh, the number of states. Uh, and this this is why it was necessary to go to the color Jones rather than just the Jones, because the Jones one will mix these two things together and they don't have a clear thing to process. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's also not equal, it's just always less than or equal to and this is just for me myself. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's just think about like see this this other round always holds. Let's just like take a brief moment to think about why you get a sharp drop, to get a drop. So the idea is this, if you have a non-additive diagram that corresponds to the existence of this one edge loop in the all a state. Okay. So remember that we have um, this guy that is not adequate. If you have a non-additive diagram, that means that you can always find a state circle with a segment connected to itself. Um, and so the degree, <laughs> the actual degree is no longer the this upper bound is going to be strictly less than the upper bound. So we can see that very easily in the example of the non adequate argument of the unknown. So, my great great example is useful for everything. Right. If everything should work for this example, like the other thing. So, there it is. So, um, if I compute the Kaplan bracket, so the upper bound is it's already takes in, also takes in the Kaplan bracket. So, I have A, um, and then I have this thing for D. For the circle that you get, it's all a to the minus one 
multiply by two things. Okay. Um, so if I if I just apply the same relationship, I should get a times minus a squared minus a to the minus two plus a the minus one minus a squared minus <coughs> a to the minus two. Okay. Do we still have like a single term that's dominating the degree? No, since it is not additive, right? But you can also see just by direct. So, so if I multiply, yeah. So what is what is going? You know, um, oh, forgot a two. Okay, there are two circles. Um, what is so what is going on here when you don't have the additive condition? Um, the all a state is only one circle, right? Uh, and it has a to the plus one, and so the degree of this term is a cubed. Right? But then, what happens when you go to the next state? You have more circles, and the difference in monomial is only minus one. So you actually get two terms in the same term. That's the problem. And so, and in the different signs, right? So I'll just write out some terms. Uh, everybody is. Uh, so this is one of the first terms, and then you have a to the minus one plus four. Three plus the rest of it. So, so minus a, minus a q plus a q goes away. Okay, so that's what the degree is less than that. Uh, so, so this is, this is like a really simple example that tells you that, that there, there's this um, definitely degree that where this degree drop comes from. Okay. And then it's, all, it's also the case that so so the argument for colored domes is uh, more involved in this just has to do with how, how you evaluate this by capital. Um, I should also say that that but again you need to you need to look at the, the colored domes rather than the dome. Because because of the the fact that when you have the, the dome polynomial, it, it mixes the, the crossing coordinate uh, number. Of, I would say the Euler characteristic are together. Okay. So what happens is that you actually like uh, for the Jones polynomial, the degree itself is not enough to tell you when something. The degree doesn't necessarily have to drop if you're not as not. But if you go to the color mode, then it has to drop. And then the more thing, the other thing that we were able to show that the drop is, is not only there, but it's also like that. And we found an application, a very special case of determining the, the process number of satellite dropping. To our knowledge, and other people can tell me that's true, um, it's like the only infinite family where we can determine exactly the, the, the process. Wow. Yeah. Just, maybe there are other examples. So, anyway, um, thank you. Thank you for listening. I'll stop here. Does that show? I mean, the color Jones we know is like sufficiently complicated not to vary. Does that show how hard this connect sum question is? If you need all of this, <laughs> like really Yeah, but we didn't answer it, right? <laughs> yeah, so the connected sum question is extremely difficult. Um, I, I don't know that that I think it, it actually shows that it's maybe even more more than the colors a great embarrassment of the problem. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is there an algorithm for the positive number? Great question. No. Yeah. So so uh, so more than be result probably the closest we can get to an algorithm because he uses normal term theory. So that could be a way to come up with an algorithm, but it doesn't determine that's the problem. We don't have that. There's no other. Great question. Yeah, but that's a good thing. Um, can you go back to something about that? Oh, you you um talked about like how hard it was to determine whether the white head double was adequate. Yeah, um, it was not adequate. Somehow oh, not adequate. Sorry. Yeah, because there's you know. The, the degree bound is like between 4D plus 2 and 4D plus 1, right? And if it somehow had an adequate diagram, I don't know how, then then the actual minimum process would be just instead, which will be, you know, 
I don't know. Um, it'd be interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, Yes, Do you think it? that your technique might apply to like different kinds of knots or different kinds of diagrams? Because I mean, if this is like super hard, maybe the, all the work that you did could be used elsewhere. I I think I think if we can work a different angle on how this was something that's not adequate, then the problem is that the cultural topic doesn't have a good way of telling you something that's not adequate. So we have to use some other do some other way of doing it. But, but that's um, it also doesn't have a way to detect it doesn't necessarily have a good way to detect A adequacy or B adequacy. And so I think some other tools need to be built on that. Yeah, and that, I, I, I do think that there's there's an opportunity for using some other tools to, to, to help with that part of it. I have lots of questions I want to ask you. Is there a question on the Zoom? Yeah, go ahead, Ken. Yes. A Hey, yeah, so apologies if I'm asking something that was already covered. But what, um, you know, what is it that it works for the uh, maybe not other satellites, or you didn't do other further twists might have, or I mean, why is this just a white head? I guess is the question. Oh, because it was it was difficult to show that other things are not adequate. It's the whole adequacy. It's the whole adequacy. Yes, the adequacy. Yeah, that's actually surprisingly. Um, we we actually because because in your paper there was also like towel twisted and all the other sort of twisted. We we tried that. It just didn't. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.